Here we go, and swipe there. Perfect. G'day guys, how we doing? Today we're gonna have a pretty uh, relaxed time. I just need to prep some paint. How's our lighting? Might just give that a little bit of a repair team. Get that over there. Whoop, watch out for that. Getting flicked around, guys. Flicked around. Let's put that to there. And turn this down a wee bit. There we go. Alrighty, Tardy. How's our angle? Perfect. That'll do just fine. Okay. Swipe there. Today, we are making some paint. Just a little bit. And then if we get really excited, we'll paint with it. But no promises. No promises. Right. Here we go. Just getting the yolks out, team. Matthew. Yes, I do. Normally you're facing the other way. We might turn back around that way shortly. But uh, at the moment, you're facing me. You're welcome. There we go. Dry off this yolk a little bit. And then roll it. Here's our little yolk. Roll it into my hand ever so gently. And then pop it into here. Boop. There we go. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Put it down over there. There we go. Lovely. And on to number two. Hey Anthony, how we doing? Dydro. Hey Dydro. Welcome. I'm just going to gently split open some of these eggs. We might actually even go as far as to using some of the egg whites today. But I don't want to get your hopes up in case that doesn't actually happen. I'm John's friend from Scotland. All right, Dijo, welcome on in. Here we go, next egg. Just there like that. And this little rolling thing I'm doing here, it just gets off the last little bits of the moisture. So that's one completely dry egg. Thanks, Kelvin. You know, for people who are watching for the first time and seeing me play with egg yolks, they're probably very confused at what you think I'm telling them today. <laughs> Anthony, we're extracting the egg yolks and we don't want to have the egg um, sac and we don't want to have the egg whites. You can use egg whites in painting, but typically the effect that makes egg dry in egg tempera is actually, I think I'm going to say this correctly, a coagulation. Coagulation? Coagulation. It's the proteins and the fats. Now, although the egg whites have protein in them, it's the fats that cause the paint to actually coagulate and harden on the surface. It's different from water-based techniques like that. Here we go, get that a little bit off there. Lovely. And onto the hand. Here we go. Lovely. One more little egg yolk. Voila. And we're gonna get this little egg yolk I forgot to bring my uh, scalpel with me, so we're just using a regular little knife, putting it on the edge of the fingers, and then just poking it. Just, sorry, regular knife, regular pen, and just popping it with a very gentle hole. And just gently draining it. There we go. And I want to use my thumb almost, and my other fingers, to just keep that uh, sack pulled back, so I can get all that fantastic yolk and none of that part. Here we 
we go. Don't want that part. I just want the yolks. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Jason, context is inbound. Context is inbound. For now, just enjoy me grabbing uh, some yolks. <laughs> yes, Jason, we are indeed. That is the plan. That is the plan. We're here in the um, Sid Gower Art Studio. It's on the wall behind me here. And the goal is to just get some paint ready. It's open-ended whether we paint with it or not, but we do need some paint. That's a big factor here. So that's what we're doing. And we're trying to be as clean as possible. There we go. Beautiful. Same story. Here's our messy little cloth. Drop that egg onto it. Roll it side to side. Beautiful. You see how that just drains it off? But you have to be very, very careful. You need very fresh eggs to do this with. If your eggs aren't fresh as they can be, you can end up actually um, causing them to, excuse me, itchy nose, causing them to uh, rupture and split everywhere. So as long as you are very delicate with how you go about it, you'll be all right. <laughs> Cheers, Jason. So when I say we're painting from the crate, this is the room I'm in. You're actually seeing it from the other side of the room. Usually we're on that side. And when we're on that side, there's that giant uh, canopy up and things like that. Artwork, blah, blah, blah. But from this side, God, that nose is itchy. From this side, you just see me, the desk, the glass wall. If it wasn't a Saturday, you might even see people walking past, but it is, so it's just me in here today. This is how Seb Gower spends a Saturday day, and if we have too much fun, you might even see how Seb Gower spends a Saturday night using these egg yolks. <laughs> um, important, guys, though, because a lot of the time we're taught that the best way to have a Saturday night is go out and party and go wild. And yeah, although that's great, remember that you are an individual and you're allowed to choose what makes you happy. And if that's not going out to town, it's actually staying inside and doing your craft and pursuing something unique and different like that, then please, by all means do that and don't think you're missing out. I'd value missing out Man, that nose is itchy. I've got my pinky here, I've got to scratch it. Hold on. Whew. <laughs> G'day, Justin. Welcome on back in. We're making some uh, very hard shells on these. We're making some egg tempera today, Justin. I appreciate that. You were here at the, uh, back in the early days of streaming on TikTok when they just started offering the live service. We were outside in Tauranga everywhere. Cherie, it's your first time. Well, this needs a lot of context, but we won't give it to you. We'll just let it be caught up in mystery. Here we go. Lovely. See that yolk there? This is a perfect one. See that? That is literally just the yolk. It's very fresh. You can tell by how high it is. And then it's got all its egg whites gone. So I just roll that gently onto my hand. Bang. That's what we're after. That one perfect egg yolk. Lots of height. Fantastic amount of height. And we're just gonna grab this pen and we're gonna go boop. Um, yes, I did. But if you want the full description of how I came to be cracking eggs in an office here, then the best place to go is to the link in my bio where there's an about me page. And I'll tell you everything, everything. What pigment? We haven't chosen a pigment yet. So the pigments are still, come on. Who gave these chickens so much calcium? Um, undecided on the pigments, but after I've done this one, I might show you a thing or two. How's that sound? I'll just twist you around here a little bit so you can see this mess I'm making. This is a uh, yogurt container here. And it's perfect, so I'll crack the eggs into here. Come on, off you come. 
and then I'll use the egg whites later in the piece, the egg whites later in the piece to make a shake, or we can even use them to paint, but they don't last, uh, sorry, not last as well. They have a different effect. We want the opaque nature of the egg yolk. See that one there? That's a little egg yolk, that's what we're after. And you can see there's this one little stringy bit that attaches itself to the egg yolk. If you can get rid of that, that's fantastic, but don't risk popping the yolk for it. And see that, that's a nice dry yolk there. So we're gonna roll it, just like that. Sometimes you'll pop it, it's totally fine if you do. Grab a new one. There's our little egg yolk, and you can see there, it's not too thick, not too thin, and it's got that nice little bit of height to it. See that? That's the amount of height you want. It's a good little bit of height. It actually is a science lesson in a big way because when you're making paint, there's a huge amount of science to it. You'd just be thinking, it's just color. Just put the color on a thing. Well, paint actually has a bunch of properties to it. I don't know why my nose is so itchy. Paint's got a bunch of properties. You've got the pigment, obviously. That's what provides the color. You've got the solvent, and you've got the binder. Now the binder, or should I say vehicle, is the thing that moves the paint around. So, for example, with oil paints, who can guess what the vehicle is for oil paints? It's in the name, <laughs> it's oil. And then you've got watercolors, water's the vehicle, and then you've got, I'm gonna scratch it with a piece of fabric actually. I must have like a bristle or something. Oh, facing the wrong direction. Um, and then with acrylic paints, they use um, usually all sorts of funny names like acrylic polymers and things like that, which don't get confused into thinking acrylic paints are nice and healthy and oil paints are the solvent-based ones that are bad. Acrylics have a lot of nasty stuff in them as well. Egg temper is a very, very, do I have an egg in my bed? Egg temper is a very, very old technique, and it uses egg as the binder. And instead of having a solvent, like a, a chemical solvent, I think there is egg in my bed. Let me just check that. No, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. Instead of it using a solvent, which say for oil paints, the solvent evaporates, it's called off-gassing, and it usually works, can do it for up to six months. This off-gassing effect causes the paint to dry, harden, and stay beautiful. Um, and then with acrylic paint being water-based, there's a mixture of this off-gassing effect from just like a PVA drying and the water evaporating. But um, when it comes to egg, this will evaporate, the water, but it's actually coagulation that strengthens it. These proteins bind together and lock into place. Um, and so it's a different technique to drying. But since it's egg and not a oil or an acrylic polymer, it typically actually doesn't go yellow over time. So this is one of the only methods that we know since medieval times has survived for over 2.5 thousand years and maintained, provided you look after it. If you leave this in the hallway with your dog, the dog will lick the painting clean. But if you keep it in a nice room away from direct sunlight, 2.5 thousand years. Hey Steve, how are we doing? Nope, it's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. It's really unknown, unusual term in art. Basically, what it means, what it means is that when left on its own, when left on its own, the uh, put that there, the fats and the proteins are going to go through a process which is entirely natural. That's going to cause them to lock the pigment into the layer, and because it does that and a different means, you may hear about, see it's another one, good height. Probably the best height so far. You probably hear about, um, sorry, I'm getting addicted to pouring this egg out. I'll bring this closer so you can actually see what I'm doing here, guys. Let me just move some of this stuff around. How's that? There we go, that's the position we wanted them. So you can see this egg sack here, there we go. So this sack that I'm holding, we do not want to use that. We want to drain it, but not use it. That part there, away you come. And there you go. That last little part goes to waste. Wipe my fingers off. Two more eggs, and then we'll have plenty in this little jar. This one, oh, not that one. This one here, again, on that edge. There we 
go. Do you see my comments? I do see your comments. I miss a few, I miss a few, but I do my best. I'm trying to concentrate on these. I don't want to lose any of these eggs. This is my last tray of, how many eggs have I got there? 18 eggs. So I don't want to make any mistakes here. Now if I leave it in the shell here, you see if I dangle it there, a lot of that egg white just gets lost. Perfect. I can slide that onto my hand, drain that off there. Another egg. Now if I grab this, perfect. I'm going to bring it across to here. Voila. I'm going to drain that from side to side. Just like that. And see how it's losing all that white? Sometimes I just do it from hand to hand, but to keep the process a little bit cleaner in here, I'm using rags. You can see that, there's our egg. Ready to go onto my hand? Almost lost it there. There we go, beautiful. Move that out of the way. Here's our little cup. Pen, it's a little bit ad hoc, but it's totally fine. On the edge of the fingers, stab it gently. Don't cut fast, otherwise you can make a real mess out of things. And you can see how that just drains straight out of there. And if I don't force it, if I don't force it and just use my thumb to keep the membrane back, yeah, nice. Keep the membrane back, then I can lift this up, ready? Just like this. Get that last little bit out, and that whole thing can go in there. Done. Now this stuff here makes a great shake or an omelette. You don't have to throw that away. In fact, please don't throw that away. It's for keeping. Okay. Hello, ZJ. How you doing? Um, let me just swipe back this way. There we go. <laughs> and welcome from Mexico. Yes, a huge difference. So the nutrition of the chicken is going to have a massive difference. And the most important difference, which you may have guessed, between different eggs is how fresh they are. How fresh they are. Here's another one. This is a really good one. Ready? Just coming down onto this. And then we're just going to gently rock it side to side. And see how it's leaving behind a trail? Almost like a slug. That's exactly what we're after. Just like that. Perfect. Now I'll get my hand out. Woo! There's our egg. Fantastic. Get this here. Pen. Egg yolk. Like, yes, it does. And you'll be like, what, prove it? Well, the reason why it's one of the only functions, uh, one of the only methods that's been proved to do it is because it's one of the oldest methods there has been. The Last Supper, do you remember that painting with Jesus in the center? Done by Michelangelo, I think. Still around, still looking beautiful. Done with the egg tempera. So now that we've got all our eggs sorted, just wipe down my hands. Can you use turkey or emu eggs? I use just chicken eggs, but I have heard of artists using quail eggs, which remind, makes me think that, uh, I mean, that strikes me as a big job, guys. But um, I suppose you could. I suppose you could, because it's got very little to do with the fact it's a chicken egg. What it's got a lot to do with is the fact that it's a, it carries the fats and proteins appropriate to coagulate and therefore set and hold the pigment onto the surface and do so indefinitely. So, let's put the lid on this, there we go. We've got five more eggs, so if we run out of gas, we can pull out some things as we go. Now we're gonna make one color together. There we go, let's grab out some of these little, these little containers. Um, looks like honey, yeah. <laughs> Liquid gold, that stuff. That's the greatest thing out. Now let's grab some of these. I'm gonna do a little swap over here. These are pigments. There we go. I'm gonna wipe down this. And sorted. Wipe down the bench here. Keep a nice clean workspace. Does the depth of the yellow affect anything? Honestly, it stops you from being able to get perfect white. Perfect, stark white. 
which you very, very rarely want. But it will mix into whatever pigment you add and become like it. You add orange to it, it'll become orange. In this case here, we've got a big sheet. And I think we're going to kick off with some blue. Dare I say it. Ultramarine. I think that's going to be our move. So, one and two. These are the last two ingredients to make the paint. All right, let me grab the tool that we need to use. Usually around here somewhere. Here we go. Ah, I took it home with me. So we'll just use a brush and then put it in the bag afterwards. Now, we're gonna use the egg and we're gonna use the stuff. First things first though, I think I need a teeny tiny bit, if I've got it in here, of water. Give me a second, I'm gonna grab some water. You'll be able to hear me while I wander off, which is kind of fun. Coming on back, coming on back. He's coming on back. Here we go. Right, voila. This one's for me. Yum. And this one is for this. Not that it matters. They're both the same. They're really both the same. Now, a couple of ways to do this. The most common way, let's put that off there is just going half and half. Half this, half that. But since we're using the blue first, we're just gonna go for a bit less. Don't want too much blue. Mm. Here we go. And now we're gonna fill this up. Put my finger on the side here, so I know how much we want. Add this in, ready? Coming up close here, and in we go. If we're gonna have one more favored than the other, because of the way I paint, I would favor the egg over the water, because I like it slightly thicker. But if I wanted to make this much thinner to spread further, obviously, the other way around. Yeah. If I was going to paint with it in a couple of days, what would I do? I would put um, some vinegar in that. Vinegar? Vinegar. But I don't do that. I make it to be used. Does the egg make the paint thicker? It adds the most amazing luminous qualities to it. And this here is our pigment. That there is ultramarine blue. Now, egg, one part water, one part egg, ultramarine blue. And we're just gonna come in like this, and get a little bit, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. I love pigment, so one thing I always say, if you can't have enough. <laughs> so you'll sometimes notice with my paintings, there's way too much pigment in them. And honestly, that's the way I like it. Now, we're about to do something that's very naughty. So naughty, in fact, they tell you not to do it. And we're gonna do it anyway. You'll be like, you can't do that. There'll be, there's gonna be an egg temper purist somewhere. He's gonna watch this and have an absolute heart attack. They'll be like, he's ruined it. 
All right, there we go. So now we've got our pigment, our water, and our egg. Now if you're doing this as a, as a regular person, an egg, an egg tempera purist, what you'd do, um, did I bring more than one plate? <laughs> Why don't you say that? No. Um, <laughs> so what we do here is we should mix the egg yolk with the water until we've got a nice permanent blend that's ready to go. And then, when we add in the uh, pigment, we should actually do it on a mixing plate. So we put the pigment down, and then with a palette knife, we stir it in gently to slowly get the color right, the viscosity right, get everything perfect. Now, this is where I'm gonna really upset an egg tempera purist, because I don't like using a palette knife. I don't like using a palette. I don't like putting it all together and slowly mashing away the paint to make it. So I put it in a little jar like this, and screw the lid on. Hold your breath, purists. There we go, just like that. And I give it a shake. Like a protein shake, except it's blue. And I just give it a little bit of a shake. Nothing too much, nothing too vigorous. Just gently like this, yeah. Yeah, Leilani. Now the reason why you're never supposed to do this, this is so bad, and the egg tempera purist will be flipping out, is it puts air bubbles into the mix, and it can change the egg yolk. Because if you shake it up like this, just like whisking eggs, it can have a dramatic impact in how it works. If you go in for huge detail and really, really thin layers that are perfectly complex and built up over time, then yes, absolutely. You may want to follow the steps to a T to make sure there's no wild cards. For me, I don't mind a few bubbles. And I also don't mind if it gets a little bit thicker from a wee bit of shaking. This is totally fine. So it depends what you're into. But this also is so much of a, a much, much easier way to get the paint. There we go. That's a fluffy paint shake. Yeah, a little bit. See that there? We're all done and dusted. All done and dusted. Now, let's take this lid off and have a little look-see here. How'd we do? Okay. We've got a little bit of pigment left on this brush. Since we're gonna use the brush again, I'm just gonna mix that in there. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. And you can see, you can probably tell on the outside of that, see how there's bubbles there? That's what the purists want to avoid. But because I'm gonna really razzle dazzle it onto the surface, that doesn't really bother me. That's totally fine. All right, there's our first color, ready to go. Now the question is, the question, which hasn't been answered, hasn't been answered. I've got some works I need to get onto. I've got portraits and landscapes and uh, a surfboard, but today's a Saturday my day off. It should be a day off. So the question is, what are we going to do with a day off? What are we going to paint and make? If the world was at our feet and we could make whatever we wanted to make, no please paint? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm saying, if we could make whatever we wanted to make, we've got all the colours here, every colour we need, and a couple of hours, just to do whatever we want, what would we make? The current idea I've been sitting with and considering has been to paint a cowboy. Um, just a classic cowboy in denim, probably two denims, and an environment behind him. But I thought I'd ask before I lock it in and choose the photo, do we have any other ideas? Ideas of what we could make a cottage house with a girl in the grass running with a basket. Very specific. Humans falling off jeepers. That's not very constructive. Let me have a little look-see here. If I come over here to this iPad, 38%, perfect. We've got 38% on the iPad. Now, we can do just about anything. There's a whole spectrum of things we can grab a hold of. Orville Peak, now we're talking. Make him do a standoff with a cow, but with bananas instead of guns. It's creative, it's definitely creative. 
Here we go. It's creative. It's fucking cowboy. It needs to be portrait, team. I'll just remind us of that. Portrait, not landscape. Because that's the surface we're working with. <sighs> mm, 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 mm. I also want to do a bit of a portrait up close, too. Maybe we search. I've got a fun one. Oh, I've got a fun one. <laughs> a gingerbread house? Yeah, I could do. What about an old cowboy portrait? So it's really close up, and you can see all his weathered lines. That sounds like, ooh, there's some good pictures on Shutterstock. Which one is it gonna be? This one looks like a bit of fun, actually, team. Yeah. Let me just get this sorted. And then I'll uh, turn it around to show you. All right, let me just get this sorted here. Let's zoom in a whole lot more too. There we go. This is gonna be a fun one to do. This is a good one. Where is my photos? Here we are. Let's get this here. Just change the zoom ever so slightly. What's the size of our canvas? There we go, beautiful. Here's our picture. Get ready. Angry cowboy. This is our plan for today. I think we might even zoom in a little bit further even. Go the whole way in. There we go. Now we're talking. Zoom in a bit more. There we go. Okay, bigger face. We can focus on those fe uh, facial features. The beard blends into the face a lot, so we'll only be able to tell the beard by the hues that we use. The hand is there. The gun's insinuated, but actually it's not about that. The, ha the hand's just grasping it, and you could insinuate that to be a shovel, a spade, a hoe, whatever you like. All we see is just a really thin piece of metal. Um, oh my God, painter's point of view in his eyes, maybe. Well, we'll see. We'll see what comes out. He's got amazing contrast in his face, though. A lot of fun features to capture. And all this area through here, all this dark area, is going to be this blue that we've just made. So, let's get started on that. I'm going to put this iPad back, and then I'm going to spin you around to be back with me. Bear with me just a second. Bear with me and you'll see a whole world of pure imagination. Get rid of that. I'm just going to get this stand here. Move it to here. Spin you around. You spin my head right round, right down. Where you go down, when you go in downtown. There we go, beautiful. Come with me guys, don't get lost. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna have you down this low, it's just to start with, I'm gonna bring you up here. We got the whole picture in there? Yeah, there we go, perfect. Yeah, paint on the iPad, it is a story of my life. All right. Let's bring you on back a little bit further. Let's put you there. And we'll bring this over just a wee bit. You spin my head right around, right around. Where are you going down when you go going downtown? How's that for positioning? That's good. Big surface, big surface. Then I'm going to grab this last one here, spin around this light. Bear with me. I'm going to lift this one up. and down. There we go. Okay, lights all sorted. Canvas here ready to go. I think we're good to start. How do we feel, team? Perfect. Have we got people on iPhones and Samsungs feeling like you can see everything? Because, uh, there we go. There we are, yep. Fantastic, fantastico. All right, 
You spin my head right around, right around. Where you go down, where you go in downtown. Here's our paint, and we'll just crack in. I think that's the best move to make. Do, 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 do. Fantastic. Yeah, we're good to go. Right, here's our big sheet. This is actually an AC panel. And if you're wondering how I prepared it, gesso. Gesso on the panel. There we go. So it's quite poetic. The first line we're going to do, <laughs> the first line we're going to do here is going to be the line that makes up the cowboy hat. See that there? First line. You can already see the cowboy hat starting to form there. And you can see by the way I'm repetitively brushing, getting that. Let's turn this down one. Oh, guys, is that nice? That's much more quiet. How's our sound going, team? As well, is our sound quality pumping? Or are we lacking? These are the questions. It's good, no complaints. Perfect, perfect. We can always turn the sound up or down. But there's not a whole lot of background noise, being that we're in the office all by ourselves today, which is pretty cool. There we go. The other thing we can do too, this is pretty fun. Bear with me a second. We can actually turn that up like that. And then there's massive receiver gain. And see if that actually has a good impact on the sound. How do we feel about that team? Is that good or bad? There we go. Put that there. Put that there. There we go. We're sorted. Did we improve it or did we ruin it? Uh, no, we're going to use more. Please paint. <laughs> we'll do plenty of painting. And if you run short on painting, there's plenty of painting out in the... Uh, on YouTube, endless painting, endless painting. Makes a difference, makes no difference. Interesting, wild. <laughs> Kester, probably never. I'm just not qualified enough to talk about that sort of stuff. I'll teach you about paint. Beautiful. You can see why it's drying out straight away. It's connecting into that uh, gesso layer. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Arguably, arguably it wants to be a bit thicker. <laughs> Hello, Jay. Sounds like a good plan. That's good. There we go. Perfect. Mm -mm -mm. Shuck a slash in there. Just the right amount of this. Arguably would like a bigger brush, but we'll work with this for now. <laughs> Cheers, sunflower. And 
Make sure my phone is charged because it always dies halfway through. Ooh, JJ, that's going good. <laughs> You're never on time. I know I've been meaning to get a schedule. Been meaning to get a schedule, but I haven't done so yet. So, once there's a schedule, it'll be easy to tune in. You'll just be able to leap on, and you'll be like, right, now is the time. Now, Facebook features, so many people get hung up on these. The amount of messages I get asking about how to tackle a face, how to bring it together, why doesn't it look right, all this sort of stuff, it's because you're trying to judge it too quickly from layer one. Why would the blues look correct from the bat? Already I can tell that I've put these eyes maybe too close together. That's totally fine. We're not worried. We're just adding in the paint. In the spots that we can see it. And enjoying it. This one's gonna come out here a bit more. Like that. Because only once we add in a whole spectrum of colours do we expect the face to appear. We don't expect it straight away. That would be absolutely outrageous. That's going well. I've never seen the beginnings of the paintings. All right, well, here you are. Here you are. Now, remember to think about these paintings a lot like we think about a uh, AAA caterpillar. Doesn't need to be a butterfly straight away. But it does need us to be patient with it. That's all that's essential in the early layers of a painting that we be patient with the result and enjoy ourselves. That's key. A little bit more through there. There we go. We might even bring this brim down a little bit more. There we go. Like I say, we're just spotting colours. Shapes, dark areas, hues and tones. I'm not going to get too hung up. I'm making sure it's perfectly factual, not at the start. <laughs> you can see this here? That's for the few bubbles that are in the work. We're just going to spread those bubbles out, dissipate them. Doesn't matter if we lose a bit of the facts in the picture, it's totally fine. We can bring those back. <laughs> well, uh, this painting's got a long way to go, but I'm going to bring this blue in all over the show. So, to start with, I sort of framed a few of the little pieces, but don't be surprised as the blue just consumes most of the picture and leaves almost just the face sticking out. Because this coat of blue as well will act as the first coat that sucks up or works into a lot of that gesso. So we've got to allow it to do that, to loosen up that gesso layer. But we also have to remember, we've only got so much blue. Once we run out of blue, we're out of blue. And unless we mix some more, we won't have more blue. That's part of the fun. It makes it uh, more purposeful, like sniping. Think of uh, a lot of artists just grabbing color after color, going at the canvas wildly, which I do agree with. But imagine if every color in your collection was actually intrinsically finite. And by using it, 
you made the choice to slowly run it down a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. See that? Doesn't need to be exact. These brush strokes can be a little bit more wily and woolly. There we go. And on the space here too. No harm in that. Just pop in a few of those bubbles. Keep it nice and flat. The one thing about egg tempera, the one thing about it, is you've got to make sure the paint stays flat. That way it dries efficiently, layers efficiently. Everything's better when the paint's nice and flat. There we go. We're going to go up the top here a little bit too. Now that we've done the hat, I want to get some blue into this background. Right up in here. Beautiful. Just like that. Covering up all of that, all the way out to the sides. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Scribbled and made a <laughs> Oh, thanks, mate. But remember, one person's art is another person's nightmare. Not everyone's into the style of art. Not everyone's into my art. If you hate this, I love that, because if you don't like it, you're entitled to your own opinion, and what you don't like helps you figure out a better idea of what you do like. So, that's where we're at. You've probably heard me say that before, if you've been in here before. Um, oh, thanks. Oh, your son likes watching the videos. Oh, that's fantastic, Tarquin. I'll say hello from me to your son. It's an absolute pleasure to be here painting for him. Now. The one catch with this picture, it's quite funny actually, is a drastically underprepared nature in which we're approaching it in. I had a rough idea of a cowboy in my head, but I didn't know this was going to be the cowboy. And I didn't know if I was going to spend the whole day today making just pallets and pallets and pallets of paint, or if I was going to actually start thrashing around some paint on a canvas. I wasn't sure. Anyway, I decided to paint. <laughs> so this is our only jar for painting. The other one's got the egg yolks in it. We've only got one little jar for making artwork. How wild's that? We'll make it work, but we've only got one jar. So we're gonna run the blue out, and once the blue's run out, we'll grab the next color, mix it in this jar, have a little bit of blue through it, and then with that little bit of blue, that little bit of blue, we will move on to the next color, and the next color, and the next color. So every additional color is gonna have a little bit of its predecessor in it. So we're using this pot each time. Kind of fun actually, kind of like that. If it's too much of a stark difference, we may, we may wash out the little pot between rounds. We'll see. We'll see. Let's get a bit more in the space here. And remember guys, it can be wild. It's allowed to be wild. It doesn't have to be an exact science. In layer one, just like when we were doing that face the other time, it's less about trying to get the character to be there and visually intensified looking at you, and more about you Sounds weird, you're like, no, I'm here to make the piece of artwork. What do you mean it's about me? It's more about you familiar, blah, 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 familiarizing yourself with the elements that make up the man's face. In this case, it's a man catching the elements of his face. And then once we've done that, we better understand how his whole face comes together. Then we can start cutting him with some detail, but we're not ready yet. We just don't understand his face intimately enough. So, we'll just play around until we do. Understand the curves of his clothes, the structure of his body, his hands. There we go. A little bit more through here, down through here. Come in, more blue. You'd be like, why do you put those initial lines down? Well, as we coat them with more paint, 
you can see here a few of the lines actually still stay in place. And that's really handy. So we get that deeper colour across the whole surface. We beat that stark white colour in the paint. And then, and then, we can start enjoying the fact that we don't have to deal with stark white, that we get this beautiful blue hue to construct art on. It's kind of fun, actually. Here we go. Lovely, just like that. That's the hand. We'll put a bit more on this hand. Beautiful. Perfect, and then more around here. See that line matches up down here? That's fine. Comes down here just like that. Comes around. Fantastic. Where haven't we got? Just up in the top corner here. And then we'll be on the move. Is this egg yolk paint? Yes, Jason, it is. We actually made it at the start of the session. So this is kind of cool. We're painting a down-to-earth, salt-of-the-earth cowboy. And we're literally making the paint as we go. Cracking the eggs, mixing the paint, making the cowboy, all from scratch. Which I reckon is pretty cool. There we go. There we are. Maybe a little bit more shadow just here. There we go. We might actually, see that there, that line there coming down? Yeah, so we're gonna encroach this into here. All these shadows. A little bit more around here, there we go. See this? You'd be like, he's not even painting it that much. I'm just familiarizing myself with the structure of his face. The structure of his face. Here we are. And that, my friends, is the start of the blue within the picture. We've done the blue. Pretty fun, actually. Pretty fun. Next color off the ranks. What's it gonna be? I'm thinking. I'm thinking, probably, dare we dive into blacks? Dare we do it? I think we do, guys. I think I'm going to dive into black. As ruthless as that might be, it's the best move to make. Just going to grab our little lid here. Come on down here. A little container here. There we go. Beautiful. You know what's coming. We've still got a lot of blue left over there, so we can just mix it in here, thinking <laughs> pink. Well, the thing about egg tempera is we have to go from, we don't have to go from dark to light. But if you go from dark to light, the highlights come out all the cooler. So we can dance backwards and forwards as much as we like. But if we do the dark first, we get the structure, definition, design of the picture, and then we can start throwing around these magentas in his cloak here, around through here, his t-shirt, the amazing vermilions that hit his face, and start really focusing on showing off the light in the picture, which I think sounds pretty exciting. Oh. And excuse my hair, guys, I shampooed today, so it's a little bit all over the show. Oity toity, there we go. This is gonna be a little bit thicker, much more opaque. We didn't add more egg, but we added in a lot of black pigment. Thicker, more defining. See that straight away, as soon as it touches, it's all on. I think I'm gonna, does everyone have I'll just bring this over here because I'm going to lean back a little bit more when I do this next little bit. Bring it to there. There we go. All right. Coming on down through here. There we go. See that delightfully dark color coming in here. Beautiful. This is carbon black. 
Carbon black has zero chill. Zero chill. When it hits the canvas, in this case, the board, carbon black just leaps in there and takes full control. Look at this thing. Look at this. You see what I'm seeing? This thing has, unbelievable. It's just gonna dive straight across the top here and say blue, what blue? I don't care about no blue. If there was a color that would represent this cowboy, it'd be black. The definer, the lawmaker. Black comes into the canvas and says, this is where definition will be. And all hues and colors can move aside. Look at that. There is no chill in that. There is like, through the phone, I'm, I hope you can tell the lack of chill that this goes down with. There is not even a dry gap in it. It just says, I'm black. This is where I'm here. This is where I'm going to stay. Right here on this canvas. Full power. Look at that. Now we're really seeing that cowboy hat coming in. I'm jumping down there a little bit. And down here a little bit. And then across. See his frown goes right up. It's actually, what I'm going to love about this picture is his frown's actually intrinsically in the cowboy hat. So you want to represent that with a couple of those lines. And then coming on down here. Looking into the side here, the whole hat, not quite black, goes out there, but not entirely with black. That goes to there, and then there's a line across the top. Look at that. It's like painting with charcoal. It just goes straight on. Beautiful. And right across, lovely. Look at that color. Color, tone. Strength, guys. Strength in that pigment. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> um, coming in here. Let's leap down here. Oh, yeah, down to here. Coming down the whole way. There we go. That was a little bit thinner. See how it thinned out just at the end there? That's all right. Get this in here. We want to make sure, guys, and you want to pull me up on this. If you see me starting to go like this, tell me. This is bad. This is not good. This isn't making art. This is demanding craft. This, this is making art. When you do long, clear, decisive strokes. That's where the art comes from. And when you don't do that, you stop giving the artwork the opportunity to actually live and breathe. It becomes a series, and I'm not making fun of chickens, they made the eggs and we appreciate them for it, but it becomes a series of chicken scratches. You don't want it to become that. That's the wrong kind of art. We want to have something that actually screams, even if you as the artist are incredibly, term here, self-conscious, nervous, facing imposter syndrome, broken in some cases, whatever your process has driven you to be, your brush strokes must be immensely confident. And a good example of that is Van Gogh. Van Gogh's brush strokes even though his whole life was falling to pieces around him, every single brush stroke had this immense purpose and confidence to it. One good way to do it, if you battle with that, is to think to yourself, I'm gonna make this work with only 50 brush strokes. We'll start with 10, only 10 brush strokes, and then See if you can put it together. And although the work may fall to pieces on you, what will become abundantly clear, what will become abundantly clear, is where you're losing time and strokes. You'll better understand yourself through the process. And that's fantastic. That's what we want. I mean, isn't that why art exists in the first instance? Better understand yourself through the process. You'd be like, no. Well, in my case, I think every picture, sometimes, I mean, funny to say it with this one, but it's like looking into a mirror. And after you paint it, it's like staring into a morning mirror, seeing yourself and understanding yourself a little bit better through what that artwork became. How confidently could you land the strokes?
a little bit of a topsy-turny part of the mouth there. I sort of started in one place, changed my mind, moved again. So expect this mouth to be a little bit all over the show to start with. But we'll get it into position. <laughs> art says a lot about artists. Absolutely, Leilani. And do you sign off your art when you're done? I don't like to. I don't like to. I get forced to it some of the time. People say, you have to sign this. And I'm like, oh. I don't want to. I like, and it sounds really cheesy, I like the art to speak for itself. And in the digital age today, there's no need to put your signature on it, being that we can look online, look at all sorts of factors that'll prove that it's a piece of artwork. But the signature down the bottom, it's easy to fake. It's not for archival reasons anymore. It's just because we want to see it. And so typically it's the ego of the artist that wants the signature on the work. I think if you feel like it's peculiar, please, you're empowered. You can sign the back of the work. That's okay. But if you don't want to sign the front because you're afraid of the artwork or afraid of what people will think that you made art or felt the need to even sign it, think about those reasons more. Focus on those. And actually, if it's got nothing to do with ego, and that actually you're proud of it, you want to sign it, and it, it represents a piece of you, put your signature on that. Just make sure you're doing it for all the right reasons. But um, typically, I'm an advocate for not signing the work. A lot of um, collectors ask me to sign them and say, please sign this, or when you send it, please make sure it's signed, and things like this. But my typical style, I prefer unsigned, raw, completely and utterly raw. There we go. Um, hey, haven't seen you in like a week. Glad you popped back up. Aurora, it's good to be back. You're joining us while we paint a cowboy. Now, I'm here for a little bit longer, but I almost need to pop out because I need to turn on the air conditioning, guys. Someone's trying to melt me in this room here. And although it's great for the drying of paint, I swear, it'll turn my egg cooked if I'm not careful. Oh, cheers, mate. I appreciate that. It's early days. It's early days. But there is a fun symphony that does occur between the likes of black and blue. <laughs> A few fellas been beaten black and blue. This fellas probably beaten a few fellas himself black and blue, actually. But the point here I'm making is that ultramarine blue, carbon black, have the ability to pop together. Before any other color comes in, if you only ever could paint with two colors ever again, it'd be these two colors. And part of that is what I think sparked Picasso's big move where he started, went through his blue phase. In his blue phase, I think a part of him felt like there was no colour necessary after blue. Not because the other colours didn't exist, but there was enough beauty in blue, little bit, enough beauty in blue, enough blue, beauty in blue, to carry the picture. Every picture. Kind of cool, actually. I like where his head was at. I disagree, but I like where his head was at. I think it's quite an exciting trail of thought. But won't the egg start to smell? No, it won't. In these thin layers, without the sac, so without the membrane around the egg, in the thin layers, it'll dry almost immediately, within 20 seconds, and harden within 20 minutes. And once it's hard, it's borderline unmovable and doesn't smell. I want you to think about the likes of egg when you leave it on a plate overnight. Not the whole egg, just the egg yolk, cooked egg yolk sitting on the plate there. And it goes rock hard on the plate. That's similar to how this works here with the process of em uh, coagulation. do a little bit of that here, but no, 
So I'm in the studio right now. It's a box. We're in a box right now. And no, I can't smell any egg whatsoever. I can smell myself. That's mainly because the... Uh, mainly because the, 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 the air conditioning is not on, so we'll fix that. See, we're just adjusting those. It's funny, a few little adjustments on the eyes, and suddenly he's looking in a completely new direction, in a good way. We want his gaze more towards us. Not out to the side. Don't want his gaze out to the side. We want it this way. Cut his eyes in later. There we go. Beautiful. How do we feel? How do we feel? All right. Let's put this brush down here. I'm going to pick up these two little bits. And then... How far back are you? <laughs> are we having fun? Where are we sitting? That's kind of fun. Man in blue. We're not done yet, but uh, it's a fun start. Just wipe the ground off a little bit. There we go. Okay. What colors up next? First off, <laughs> bear with me. First off, I'm gonna get the air con sorted because my God, I'm about to roast up in here. And then we're gonna come back, but with a bit of luck, with a bit of luck, you're starting to see, um, I mean, I've made it a bit obvious because I've put his uh, flesh and his hand, whoop, paint on the face, and fantastic. Here we go. I've put the, uh, you can see the sweat forming on my face. This is how hot it is in here right now. You can see the um, face and the skin starting to show out of the picture. And then from that, the darker areas, which sort of gives away the angle he's standing in, that he's holding something, that he's rigid, that he's firm, that he's gruff, that he's made a grit. And he is wearing a, a beautifully uh, well-crafted cowboy hat, which in this picture here comes off like shiny felt. And the picture that I've got, it's actually more like leather, but um, we'll adjust that as we start adding in the uh, more earthy tones. I don't think we'll go into a wild spectrum of colors. I think we'll keep building out the earthy tones, but we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, for now, I'm gonna turn on the air conditioning and I'm gonna come right on back. Are we done? Nah, not yet. Not by a long shot. There's depth we need. So at the moment, for example, you can see the character straight away. You're like, oh, I see a guy with a gun, I think, and he's got some sort of thing on. What you miss, from this is it's like a comic book picture. It's enough for you to write a speech bubble on to say something. It represents the character in a brief moment. But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. In this picture here, we want old school steel, gruff, ma a masculine old school grit from the West. Tell me, do you see masculine old school grit from the West in this yet? You'd be like, ah, oh, it's a cowboy who probably has those traits but no the picture itself doesn't have it ah good if that's the case then yes we've represented the cowboy the individual himself in a brief fleeting moment if you wanted to put a wanted poster up on a wall but we haven't actually captured that true cowboy grit of the west that's going to take additional layers depth and little pockets and nuances to actually build that into it so it's not there yet we will be able to get it in there but that's where we're at. The color rust, 
Um, we don't want to show rust as much. We don't want to show age. He's old, that'll be represented in his wrinkles, but in terms of the old west, I want that sand, that leather, that um, sienna, the dirt. These are the colors we want. So that'll be what we build into it. Anyway, we'll have some fun with that. Right, aircon. Hello, Hello Dipak, good, how are we doing? Good, good. good. That's today? good. Um, yeah, I'm working today, all right. That's the plan. See if that makes a difference, team. Now, let's do this. Do, 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 do. Spin this around. And then I'm going to put you over here. There we go. I'm going to spin this around. Right, here's my messy desk. Bear with me. I'm just going to angle this down here. You'll have to excuse the fact that I'm sweating. Whew, it is what it is. It is what it is, man. All right, here's our color, and then this time around, I'm going to get a little bit of white. So the next color off the ranks is going to be gray. And the reason we're staying in those white and gray and black areas for now is because we want to build that um, definition into it. So the colors will act as highlights to the final product, but won't dominate it. It's not created with color. The West wasn't created with color, it was created with definition. So that's all we're after at the moment. A little bit of egg there, and that, and a little bit of water. Here we go. Just like that. Perfect. Mix that together a little bit. Hello. Have you ever tried to paint the image digitally in painting? Here we go. I don't need the mustache though, Vernon. I've got it. <laughs> Trying to anyway. Here we go. Wipe this brush off a little bit. Duck it in there. Put this lid on. There we go. Give it a little shake. A little bit of a shake. <laughs> I kind of like it. I had one person saying it that it uh, ages me, which uh, got me nervous, but um, it feels funny. Gives me a milk moustache every now and again when you're drinking something. And there's the glasses. <laughs> Those are the funnest effects, the ones that actually go on the people. I wish there wasn't just um, head features though. I wish you could add things like um, butter bing. I wish you could add things like, where's my trailer filler gone to? Like, like, like. Um, suits and gloves and things like that on it. Should be pretty fun. All right. Yeah, you do do it to your skin, but remember that when you have a milk moustache, it does love to get caught in the moustache even more. It's like, if you think of skin as something completely smooth and flat, imagine something that wasn't. Here we go. Perfect. And 10k likes. Thanks, guys. You're a pack of absolute champions, and that's... The most appropriate one of the lot, absolutely. Let's bring this in here, and let's grab this one here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I'm loving it. There we go. Now this color's medium. It's gonna be slightly lighter than the blue, but much, much lighter than the blacks. We want to use this to capture a lot of areas, including the saturation in the background. 
like I was talking about, I want to see those big, long strokes. There's still a lot of texture coming in at the moment from the, I'm just going to move you back a little bit more, guys, from the, there we go. Is that the right position? Yeah, just there, right? Perfect. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Still a lot of texture coming in from the beautiful gesso layer that we put on at the start. And so we're just dealing with that, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. There we go. Beautiful. And then after this color, we're going to gradually build in to our lighter palette, if the painting lets us. Of course, the biggest catch here, always the biggest catch, is if the painting will let us. You're like, well, why would it let you? Because sometimes the colors on it get quite thick. And all of a sudden, they won't stick. And they start pulling off the previous layers since they haven't had a chance to dry yet. So you need to give the canvas a chance to dry. There we go, beautiful. Oh, I'm just reminding myself, posture. Posture, posture, posture. There we go. saying this is defining, defining. There we go. Funny actually. I might even go about adding a little bit more. White to it, but we'll see how we go for a little bit longer. Perfect. Keep coming around in here. Do a little bit around in these facial features. over the top. There we go. Beautiful. Wonderful. 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 
da 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 Yes, I believe in yesterday. Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, yesterday came suddenly. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate that. Okay. Sneaking into the darkness. We'll see the impact we can have here with a bit of this color. Yesterday came suddenly why she had to go, I don't know, she wouldn't stay. I said something wrong, how I long. I'm gonna watch that movie tonight, yesterday. I hear it's good. I hear it's good. There we go, and then down in here. Lovely. All right. Now I need a drastically lighter color. Drastically lighter color. Let's get do 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 Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, yesterday, and suddenly, why she had to go, I don't know, she wouldn't stay. I said something wrong, how I long for yesterday. Kyle, how are we doing? We're painting a cowboy. 
but we get into the stage where it's almost too wet to continue. So we'll dabble a bit more, but uh, we'll have to see. Jurassic, different colour. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Dabbling in here. Sorry, guys, getting lost in my own thoughts as I just slap around some paint. Just get a little bit lost with me. <laughs> Now it's too wet. It's been a blasting. But that is where we need to pause this picture. For our little uh, oh, Sunday sesh. So there is the beginning of our cowboy. <laughs> bit of fun, bit of wild fun. Look in the part. Perfect. All right, team. Coming on back, we're talking about a bunch of the Brawsiators, the Browns and the Oranges, really building out that cowboy-style theme. And uh, his hand, it's a little bit darker, and so you can still see the light from it a little bit here, but actually in the picture, it blends much more into his outfit rather than just standing out like a cartoon. It's more enclosed and gritty, holding on. But the face itself, highlighted and staring straight at you. Anyway, guys, wishing you all the best for your Saturdays. Hope you're having a good time. And is it okay that there are drips? Yeah, yeah, totally fine in the early layers. To be avoided, to be honest, if you can. If the paint goes on too thick, it'll start to drip. But with those areas, you just need to touch them up. And uh, unless you want drips in it, put the paint on thinner is the basic go-to. 
Anyway, guys, that's our 90 minute curtain call. I'll catch you later. Enjoy your day. Bye, team. Fucking find the button. <laughs>